Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. So today I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> uh, different primers. Uh, primers have been coming about, you know, and we've been seeing them uh, more and more. I, I was lucky and picked up a couple thousand in the last couple of, well, in the last month. And, uh, but sometimes you don't always get what you want. Um, most of the ones that I've been picking up are large pistol and large pistol magnum. I've never used those before, and uh, but people use different primers in all different loads, and we're talking about a black powder cartridge here, um, and the same thing might be true with uh, smokeless. And smokeless has more pressure than black powder, so you have to be careful. <clears throat> anyway, um, we're going to talk about that a little bit, and I've loaded up some stuff here, and we're going to shoot it through a crony and see how. Uh, these different things, if they if they even change anything, uh, velocity wise. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, I have fellas uh, asking me about my loads, um, especially the duplex loads, and I understand why because there's not a lot of information on duplex loads. <clears throat> uh, the last book that I have that has duplex loads actually listed is the Lyman Forty Six. Edition. And you can see this one's been around a while and I've used it a lot. Um, but it actually has some duplex loads in it for some of these cartridges. Um, I've got just about every other one, the 47, 48, I think I've got 50 over here. And that's the last one that has um, duplex loads in it. Another place that I learned a little bit about duplex loads is in Ned Roberts' book, The uh, Black Powder Cartridge Rifle, uh, and Ken Waters. Um, I like that book because Ned Roberts wrote that book through the era, as the era of time <clears throat> that they were experimenting with all these different things. And when Smokeless first came out, they, uh, they, they started working with, well, of course, they shot just straight Smokeless, and they shot straight Black Powder. But they came up with a duplex load where a very tiny bit of smokeless powder was put on top of the primer and then a black powder load was uh, loaded. And they found that the barrel would stay clean enough that they can shoot several, in the book he talks about 100 shots, but they can shoot several shots without having to wipe the, the bore uh, to keep up the accuracy. <clears throat> anyway, I've, I've experimented a lot with these. I will not give out these loads. I suggest go to the library and try to find this old manual somewhere, or go online, you might find this old manual. It'll give you a starting point. The biggest reason is, one, YouTube doesn't like us showing you how to build ammo. That's part of their thing. And and I don't agree with it, but that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is, I your rifle's different than mine. When you get a black powder cartridge rifle, or any rifle actually, you work up your load for that rifle. Okay, you change the primers, you change the powder, you change the volume of powder, uh, you change the bullets, all the stuff that goes into that, you work up for that rifle and you come up with that. Me giving you what I've done all that work for um, might not do you any good anyway. You need to go to your loading manuals for starting points. Start down at the low end and work your way up. Um, one thing I did notice uh, in my experimentation, one fella said that when you put in your um, priming charge of smokeless, um, it's very small, three to five grains, you know, depending. And uh, it's a very small charge. But he commented that if you, as you raise that, if say you start at two grains, and then you raise it to three grains, four grains, and you kind of work on it. You can actually look down your barrel and see the fouling working its way out of the barrel. And, and the higher the smokeless you put in there. Now, I'm not talking about throwing a lot in. Everything's under seven grains, six grains, maybe even five grains. Um, but when you get into them higher sections, the barrel will be cleaner all the way out. So this is something that you have to do. You have to experiment with. 
and you have to do, and I'm not going to uh, give you a starting point. It was a lot of work for me, and it will do you more good to work up your rifle yourself. Anyway, why don't you grab a cup of coffee, and we're going to uh, talk about changing the primers, or will these pistol primers work until we can get more of the ones we want, or whatever. It's just something I thought would be a cool experiment. And I was out shooting today because for one thing, the weather has turned into halfway decent today. It's supposed to be about 40. Woohoo. <laughs> and uh, the sun's out. So I've been doing some shooting and I felt like looking the part. So anyway, grab a cup of coffee and come on back and we're going to get into this. Okay. So here's some uh, large pistol standard. Um, that I picked up not too long ago. <clears throat> uh, here's some Magnum large pistol primers uh, that I picked up a few weeks ago. And here's some Magnum rifle, large rifle primers that I had in my uh, stock. Uh, for my black powder loads, this is one that I use. Um, so we're going to compare it to regular um, large rifle and also large pistol uh, magnum so a little bit of each of them we're gonna we're gonna work with <clears throat> um, I've got some in 45 Colt and I'm using also the uh, 4590 cartridge with a 425 grain bullet and these are 200 grain lead bullets all of them are black powder so we're gonna see how it goes also starring in this episode, <laughs> fresh back from workman's comp because of its injury accident, <clears throat> we'll be shooting the 45 9, 90 rounds through the gamma, and uh, the 45 Colt will be expelled through the chronograph with the 1873. So, I'm going to go out and get the, get the chronograph set up, and uh, we'll start shooting, and we'll see how this turns out. And make sure you fill up the coffee cup. It's not going to take very long, and uh, be interesting to see if there's much difference. Come here, Come here. Okay, so the first round up, this is a large pistol primer, <clears throat> a 200 grain bullet, and it's in, on top of uh, a full charge black powder 3F load. So I'm just going to shoot into, I've got a, uh, I've got a bullet trap down there. So I'm going to just shoot everything into that bullet trap through the chronograph because we're just interested in velocity, and this way I can recover the bullets. I recover most of the lead around here. Um, all right, here goes our first one. Okay, that one ran 1,050, and that's with just a large pistol primer, okay? Here's one. This is a large pistol magnum primer. Same bullet, same load. Let's see how this one does. Thousand sixty three. So thirteen feet per second faster. Um, is it pressure? Is, I don't know about the pressure, but it can't be that much more. Number one, black powder has very little pressure anyway. It's very low pressure powder, and thirteen feet per second 
doesn't tell me that that's causing much more pressure. Now, a guy might take these loads and then start practicing and, and try uh, different targets, uh, sh shots, and see what kind of accuracy level, if there's a difference. Um, I'd have to say there'd be very little. So, anyway, that's that one. Okay, so I loaded up like four extras of these two different uh, primers. I'm just going to shoot them at the steel down there and see uh, if I can hit the steel on center. Well, uh, they're a little bit high and a little bit to the right. But all four of them, two of them were large uh, pistol primer, and two were large pistol magnum primers, but they're all in the same group. So uh, the, the actual primer didn't really change how it shoots much. Okay, let's try uh, one of these larger black powder cartridge. Um, I want to start with... This is the large rifle primer. Um, it's what I usually use anyway. Uh, 425 grain bullet. Let's see what kind of velocity it's going to give us. Okay, that one gave me 13. 45 so which is about what that load does for me so and the barrel looks nice and clean all right the next one large pistol that one was a large one was large rifle. This will be a large pistol. Be a large pistol magnum, I'm sorry. Let's see what the difference is. Okay, that was a large pistol magnum, and that actually gave me 1314. So, still in the same area, though. Now, large rifle magnum. This is what I usually load in uh, my black powder cartridge. That one was lower. That one was 1243. Uh, which that one was quite a bit lower. Don't ask me why. Usually it's right around 1300. This rifle shoots good 13, between 13 and 1500. Um, I usually don't get 1500 out of black powder. Uh, usually that's when I use a smokeless load. Anyway. Uh, I got a few more of them loaded up. Let's give them a. Let's give okay, them a whirl. so let's try it over. I raised it up so I don't have to crouch so much to uh, hit the bullet trap. Okay, I mentioned before that I use a large rifle mostly. I use a large rifle primer in uh, a lot of my black powder loads, but uh, some of the bigger ones I've been using the large rifle magnum. So. Both of those I use a lot. But this is a large rifle, standard large rifle primer. Let's see if we get any different results.
That one was uh, 1322. Large rifle magnum. Give this one a try. Barrel looks nice and clean. Twelve fifteen. That was a uh, large pistol magnum. Correction. That was large rifle magnum. Now we're on large pistol magnum. Let's see where it goes. Large pistol magnum, uh, 1345. So probably 13 would be about a good average. The one was a little lower, was under 13. But uh, <clears throat> I think you could get by. I would say if you're going to shoot any long-range matches, uh, you're going to have to pick a, a, a primer and work with it. And... Uh, and, and probably come up with the one that works the best in your rifle. If you're going to shoot 100 yards or less, say hunting, I, I don't think it'll make much difference. But it does make a little difference what kind of primer you use um, on all of them. How much? I don't know. It depends on whether you can live with it or not, I guess. Well, that was kind of interesting. It seems like the Magnum primers <clears throat> at times... Uh, actually gave less velocity but obviously there's a difference uh, velocity wise not big difference now I do want to I do want you to take one caution okay these are all black powder cartridge black powder cartridge is black powder shoots with a very very low pressure uh, when you're starting to go between uh, regular primers and magnum primers with smokeless powder. Um, <clears throat> smokeless powder develops one heck of a lot more pressure than black powder. And you may go over the pressure you want using a different primer with, say, a maximum load. So all those loads should be worked up to uh, from, from way down at the bottom of the uh, starting load. Uh, volumes. Um, I don't, I usually don't use anything different than it's recommended with smokeless. With the black powder loads, it's obvious you can get away with um, magnum pistol primers or magnum rifle primers if that's all you can get and you're used to using regular primers. Um, you can get away with it. Uh, it'll depend on whether that's that consistency, if you can live with that consistency, uh, usually when I use the same primer, my, my loads are volume or velocity wise are a lot closer than that. Um, but some of them are close enough. Anyway, it was just something to do to see what the difference is. I'm going to try to stay with the primers that I like. But in a pinch, if I feel like shooting, I can load some of the other things that may be available. Anyway. Well, I hope you had a good cup of coffee. I'm Buckskin Dave. Be safe when you're doing this loading. And be careful. Follow the manuals um, is the best thing to do. You guys have a great day. See you next time.